Good morning. In this video, we will discuss first come first serve scheduling algorithm. There are different scheduling algorithms are there. First come first serve, shortage of first, priority scheduling, round robin, multi level queue, multi level feedback queuing scheduling, and sometimes we may have more than one processor for that also we have a scheduling. In this video, we discuss first come first served algorithm. Before that, where this scheduling comes into picture, why it is needed, we'll try to discuss. I have a set of processes. I have only one CPU. This one CPU cannot execute all the processes at a time. Hence, there is a need of selection. I have to pick only one process among these processes and I have to allocate that to the CPU. Only one process should be selected among many. How I can do this? I have algorithm. I use different algorithms like first come first serve, shortage job first, priority scheduling, round robin. Like that I use my algorithm and among many processes one will be selected and that process which is selected will be given to the CPU for execution. Some terminologies we are going to use. One is a turnaround time. It is the amount of time to execute a particular process. Another we have a waiting time. It is the amount of time a process has been waiting in the ready queue. And we use a turnaround time. It is nothing but completion time minus arrival time of that particular process. So this third one and second one we are going to use in our discussion. We use a GAN chart. We are supposed to write a GAN chart for given problem statement. What it does, it illustrates the start and finish time of a processes. Or you can say how the CPU is allotted to the different processes at what time that can be seen in the GAN chart. For example, in this GAN chart, at zero time, you are, we are allocating a CPU to the P1, and after that, at 3, let us consider millisecond as a unit, at 3 millisecond, we are giving a CPU to the P2 process, or you can say P2 process is given to the CPU. Similarly, at 6 millisecond, after the completion of P2, we are allocating P3 to the CPU. So this is the way how we are going to draw a GAN chart. First come first algorithm is the simplest, even to understand also, even to implement also, FCFS is a very simple. The concept is very simple. The process that request the CPU first is allocated the CPU first. CPU is allocated based on the arrival time. Whichever process has come early, that process will get a CPU early. When a process enters the ready queue, its PCB is linked onto the tail of the queue. It is a common procedure whenever you are going to the malls, theater, usually we stand at the last if queue is already there. Whenever CPU is free, it is allocated to the process at the head of the queue. First person will be served in the queue like that. Let us take one example to understand the working. Process I have P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. Arrival time is given 0, 2, 3, 5, 8. Let us consider as a millisecond for our convenience. Execution time also it is a 3 millisecond like that 3, 3, 2, 5, 3 is given. What he is asking is the average waiting time I have to find out. And also average turn on time using a FCFS algorithm I have to find out. To find average individual waiting time, I have to find out. Similarly, to find average turn on time, I have to find individual turn on time of a process. FCFS algorithm using that. Now, this is given as arrival. At zero time in the ready queue, I have only P1. So, I will allocate CPU for that P1. Process arrived first should be served first. That is a theme of the algorithm. And it is non-preemptive. Meaning of non-preemptive is once if you are given a 
CPU to the process and unless that burst time is over, you are not supposed to take CPU back. So in the GAN chart, from zero time, I have allocated a P1, then up to three, it will execute the P1 process. Now, after uh, third millisecond, or you can see P1 has arrived at A, zero, time is A, burst time is a three millisecond, completion time is a three because it is a taking a three millisecond turn time is a completion time minus arrival therefore it is a three how much it is waiting no it has come at zero time and you have given the cpu at zero time waiting time becomes zero next i have a p2 when i complete it p1 it was three millisecond was over and now p2 is there Second arrival, I have to give a CPU for how many millisecond? 3 millisecond. So P2 will be over after 6 millisecond because beginning 3 millisecond I have given a P1. Now 3 millisecond P2. So we will find out what is the waiting time, completion time. Completion time, if you see the GAN chart will come to know it is a 6. And what is the turn on time? Simply take completion minus arrival 6 minus 2. What you will get? Four. For the waiting time, you have given the CPU to the P2 after 3 millisecond. When it has arrived, arrival is 2 millisecond. Now, what is the difference? There is a waiting time. 1 millisecond is a waiting time for a P2. Now, let us go to the P3. Now, P3 are allocating because the third process arrived is a P3. It is already 6 millisecond over. You are given the P3. P3 will take 2 millisecond. Means 6 plus 2, 8 millisecond. The P3 execution will be completed. For this, we'll discuss the turn on time. See, the P3 is completed at 8 millisecond. Arrival is how much? Arrival is a 3. 8 minus 3, I'll get how much? 5. Try to understand. Completion minus arrival. 8 minus 3 equal to 5. What's the waiting time? Now CPU are given at what time? 6 millisecond to the P3. At what time P3 has come? 3 millisecond. How much it has waited? So 3 to 6. How much it will become? 6 minus 3. 3 millisecond it has waited. Therefore, waiting time is a 3 millisecond. P4. P4. Will come after 5 millisecond. It was there in the ready queue, but CPU are given after 8 millisecond. It will take how much time? 5 millisecond. 8 plus 5, 13 millisecond. I'm drawing. After 13 millisecond, P4 has completed its execution. But that is a given. 13 is a completion time. Turn time is 13 minus. Arrival time is 5 given. Therefore, the waiting. Uh, 13 minus 5, it is a 8 turn on time. Waiting time. 8, you are given the CPU. It is arrived at 5. Difference is how much? 8 minus 5 will become a 3. P5, you are allocating next because it has come last. And uh, 13th millisecond, you are giving a CPU to the P5. It takes 3 millisecond to complete. 13 plus 3, it will become 16. Now, turn on time is a completion minus arrival. Completion is a 16 because it is given in the turn uh, GAN chart. Minus arrival is a 8. Therefore, turn on time is 8. How much it is waiting? See, 13th you are giving a P5. When it has come? 8. After 8 millisecond it has come. What is the difference? 13 minus 8, it is a 5 millisecond is a waiting time. This is a conclusion. You have a completion time of each process. You have a turn on time of each process. You have a waiting time of each process. Now total turn on time becomes 28. If you add this. And average means divided by how many processes are there? 5. 28 by 5 will get a average.
terminal time. Similarly, all waiting time you have to add. It is a 12 divided by how many processes are there? 5. You will get an average waiting time 2.4. This is the way how you are supposed to find out turnaround time, average turnaround time, waiting time of each process and average waiting time of each uh, for a given set of processes. This is about FCFS algorithm. Thanks for watching this video.